Welcome back folks to the VIA pinstriping page. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching. So uh, we're going to continue on this design here. And I was going for an old school feel. Whoops, that was not dry yet. I had just wiped off this thing. It does look like it was not dry. So my paint got all blotchy. Let's wipe that off. <clears throat> so, uh, again, going for an old school design, kinda. Um, I covered this thing in red on the last video, which you could find uh, on my page. Uh, this time I'm using my Kafka number three. And um, I believe the first color was uh, alpha enamel. Um, at one point, I believe it was called Hanson Red, and I think now it's just called Alpha Red. <clears throat> I am, I'm going to assume that the the artist name thing was maybe uh, introductory stuff. I'm unsure. But let's see what happens this time. So the idea with the secondary color <clears throat> is to hopefully complement the first color and maybe exaggerate some of the lines that were already put down. So sometimes I feel like the second color is easier than the first. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes not so much. So we'll see what happens. I can be uh, very critical of my own stuff, but I feel like that's just part of the game, right? Mm, let's see here. I want to do something with this, so maybe if I just put a peak right there, it gives me a chance to maybe follow this one. Now, because this is so flowy, I'm going to be jumping around back and forth a little bit. Some here, some there. I might wipe stuff off. <laughs> we'll see. We will see. All right, <clears throat> now I do have this top part here that's begging for something. So maybe I could throw another teardrop shape. Seems to be what would fit in that space. Uh, if I had a smaller brush and if I wasn't at such a funny angle, I might, uh, make that a open teardrop shape like this one but I got this stupid camera in my face and in order to be able to film what I'm doing I have to make weird moves so that's one of the reasons why some of this stuff I just do I kind of do it for fun uh, I do it so I can make a video so I can keep up with this uh, channel so this this guitar here has no no rhyme nor reason to it. Uh, I had a coworker at work that was going to go get it fixed uh, by another coworker, but they said it really wasn't worth the money because it's a cheaper Yamaha, and I would imagine that um, just fixing the nut would probably be hmm. Maybe a hundred bucks. I don't know. <clears throat> but 
but I don't think this Yamaha is worth $100. I, I, I don't know, to be honest. I don't know the model. Um, maybe the pinstriping would make it worth a little more. Um, well, definitely will make it worth more. <clears throat> but that is, that is if the guy wants to go do something with it. So, I have a lot of these things cutting in and out. So I want to try to keep that theme with these circly bits that cut back into themselves. <clears throat> if you create like a half a circle it really gives you a nice a nice center point to try to come through because you want your intersections to be a nice if you can a nice open intersection like a nice you know T if you can and that's not always the case right sometimes it looks good if it's more closed up but you definitely don't want them so closed up that it gets mucked. So if you do a loop and cut through it, it's a really nice crossing point. <clears throat> now, let's see. This is a little choppy, so I'm going to clean it up. It's by making it a little thicker. And that's the benefit to having some uh, thick to thin in your design. Uh, it's easier to hide mistakes. Oops, I got a little bit of paint coming off here. Came off my brush. <laughs> and I wiped into the line. <laughs> you can't, see that streak? Ah. <sighs> These are things you got to overcome sometimes, folks. I'm blowing on that mineral spirit so it dries up so I can go ahead and wipe, fix that line. Because if the mineral spirits that I use to clean it isn't dry, it'll blotch out. Now this paint is very sticky. Um, I might say it could possibly be some of my very first white that I bought a long, long time ago. About seven years ago. Still have some in a bottle. It's still usable, but it's very thick. And it almost needs to be reduced in a cup prior to use. But I decided to just pour some out and try it. So I'm battling that a little bit. Now let's see if I can close this thing up somehow interesting. Maybe something like this. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it looks in the end. I got plenty of time to wipe things off if I don't like it. Now we got this nice teardrop shape. I can just add a couple of these to it. To kind of accentuate that. Now, I'd say by adding those in, I'm kind of getting away from the old school feel. But I think that's where uh, individual style comes in. Um, you know, maybe if I throw some of my own stuff in there, somebody might would recognize it at afar as my style versus somebody else's. <clears throat> and my style, I don't feel like has been fully developed yet because I'm always trying different things. So 
I think most people's styles are developed out in the field, kind of out of necessity. <clears throat> you start um, you start doing certain things so you can move faster as you're pinstriping vehicles and such, and and eventually you develop a style. <clears throat> So here I'm going to go across because I don't want to have to work on this corner um, and try to work over it. So I'm going to work over here because I'm trying not to move this guitar around. So we got some open space here. We're going to try to fill up. And again, the idea is to accentuate on the original design with hopefully not taking away from it. <clears throat> Which can be tricky. And if you have um, the ability to wait for the first color to dry, that's a good idea because now I can wipe off anything I don't like. Um, that red dried really fast. Now, <clears throat> here I have a, a situation to where I went away from the line that was already there, and I don't think it looks good. I probably should have followed the original line. So we're going to wipe that off. And we're going to do our best to not mess up the corner here. All right. I try real hard to cut these up ahead of time so I have little pieces to use, but just use the corner there, create a corner, dip it in mineral spirits, and that's what I use to clean. <clears throat> okay. Some folks use um, alcohol, uh, denatured alcohol or isopropic alcohol, but I have better luck with mineral spirits. Actually, this is just paint thinner. Uh, but it says it's made with mineral spirits. It's a clean strip brand paint thinner. And the reason I buy that is because it's cheaper than the mineral spirits. <clears throat> and that is what I'm using to reduce. And I always say if you have the ability to purchase the original reducers that come with the paint, I would I would recommend that. Uh, before using any other reducer because it's been uh, chemically made for that paint although I've never <laughs> I've never personally used it I just think if they made a reducer for the paint why not use that if you can if you got it oh I just stuck my palm in there all right let's try not to do that again See that? That's from it. But I didn't smudge it, so that palm print is gonna stay. Homie didn't pay for this, so he's getting palm prints. <laughs> <clears throat> right, 
So I see a nice space here for a kind of another teardrop shape. I just I'm looking at it over and over and I feel like it gives me a chance to do one. Kind of fills that gap a little better. Less less negative space because clearly I hate negative space. I have no use for it. <laughs> All right, so let's continue over here. And there's a nice hook that I did around the knob. I still have paint that I left on the knob. <clears throat> but I'm gonna try not to mess up that zone. Maybe I can make that accentuated a little bit more. But first, have a nice curve here that I could play with. Now, I feel like my brush is overloaded, so I'm going to knock some paint off. All right. Now, less, less paint on the brush gives you a thinner line, a little more control. Less paint on the brush and drier paint gives you more control but too dry of paint and too little paint on the brush uh, will give you skipping lines and you will lose control so it's it's a balance i'm gonna get this crap off my palm so i don't start leaving fingerprints and such everywhere Now it's it's fairly dangerous to palette next to this as such, but I, I wanted y'all to kind of catch the action and exactly how much I palette. <clears throat> not every palette, not everybody palettes as much in between lines. I would imagine the pros kind of don't need to do that. The 40, 50, 60 year veterans have they don't have to palette as much. Now, <clears throat> I almost want to cut through this and see how that looks. Because I have a teardrop shape here. I'll show you. Teardrop shape here. You can see it. And I want to see if I could get one that sort of follows that. Man, I am making a mess with this damn paint. I just got it on the side. <laughs> All right. Let's see what happens. I'm going to move this thing. It's just getting it's too much. a little better. Sorry about the glare. <clears throat> All right. Let's see what happens. I'm going to work over here. I, I like it. It kind of gives it a new, a new a new situation there. What I'm going to do is give it a couple of supporting ones. 
because eh, you do turn these knobs. I feel like, you know, having spinning action there kind of uh, accentuates the action of the knobs. Maybe, maybe not. All right, let's continue here. So we have some design elements here. Let's see if we can do some stuff with this. I don't like nothing about that. All right, so take that off. <clears throat> because it's by itself, it's real easy, All right? It's not connected to anything. Let's remove that. Now, why didn't I like it? So, I feel like it was clashing with the movement of the initial lines. I don't think it was adding to anything. And it's by itself. So, why mess about if I can get rid of it? Now the <clears throat> mineral spirits does sometimes leave a haze. So you kind of got to wipe that haze off. I think it's <clears throat> I think it's cuz it's oily. Try to get it away from that glare. Let's see if I can come up with something that I like. So, um, maybe if I just follow this one. Follow it down. It's very similar to what I just had, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see what I come up with here. Okay, I like that better. <clears throat> it follows the lines a little bit. <clears throat> Leaves me a nice gap here for another teardrop shape to fill in with. Which is going to go right here. Oh, I'm dripping. Paint was overloaded on the brush and too wet. Right, so all that movement because these knobs are going to get spun at some point. <clears throat> Am 
Might be a little heavy on the teardrop shapes, but we'll be all right. Let me move this table up. I'm sliding too much. All right, a little better. Now, I kind of feel like I need something here. Maybe I can follow what I had off of this teardrop shape. It's a little, little dangerous, but let's try it. Yeah, I mean, I can live with it. <clears throat> let's clean up this corner. So if you get to looking at pinstriping a lot, you're going to realize that the meeting points of where lines meet are kind of going to tell you the quality of your pinstriping. <clears throat> if that person can, can make decent uh, connections, you know, it means they care. If, if they're just let them crisscross and go everywhere and they're skinny when they meet and, and all that. They're all not uniform. I mean, it, it doesn't mean that they're not good. It just, it just means that uh, they've taken less time to ensure uh, that it looks nice. It's kind of, it's kind of like housekeeping, right? You want this stuff to look like you care. Because if you don't, what the hell's the point? See, like right here, I got a little teeny tiny extra bit. So I want this to end where that extra bit is. Boom. If, if I had a finer brush and less paint on my brush, I can get a finer tip. But um, <clears throat> I'm doing this for video. I'm doing this so it can be seen. So I'm not really overly concerned with fine, fine lines. Plus the thicker the line, uh, the better the paint will hold probably, the less chance it will fade. Very, very fine line. Uh, you can pretty much be assured it's gonna fade at some point. So, I have this situation here. Let me see if I could do something interesting. I feel like this is where all my palm prints, prints have been, so I'm going to clean this up a little. I kind of don't know where to go with that, but let's try something. We'll see if I can make it, make it look like it was meant to be.
See, I have one of these, so I kind of made another one. <clears throat> and I've extended a little bit far. You see that little extra there? I'm just going to clean that off. A little bit of housekeeping. When I find this thing 20 years from now in a thrift store, I want it to look good still. Because <laughs> I'll probably buy it just because it'll be funny. <clears throat> All right. So, just a random ass straight line. Let's do something with that. Give it a little arch. Which I've not put an arch like that anywhere, so why the hell not? Now we have this coming downward. So because we have all of the other teardrop shapes. <clears throat> we turn this around. Now I can complete this backwards. I know how. It just doesn't look as nice when you do that. So you reach over all this crap, push down hard, we'll lift up. And I think we're gonna do a few of them. So maybe one more or two more. One. I think that's enough. I don't think it needs more than that. <clears throat> so, put it back where it was. I have these two nice ones which I stuck my palm in. And let's see if I could put one or two over here to match it. If we're going to be not cohesive, let's be not cohesive all around. Um, kind of wonder. If I kind of burst these out, if it would look okay. And this is what I mean by burst these out. Let's create a circle with these little teardrop shapes. Right? It's kind of like a... Since I did one there, I'll do one here. You start off teardrop shape and then they become smaller dots as they go around right it's a little a little fan a little as my ancestors would call them <laughs> we're begging for a little white here We'll do something like that, like that. Maybe one going from here down to complete the look. And we'll give this one a little, a little bow tie. Why not? We're all over the place with this now. Oh, sorry, broke base. Don't be mad at me. All right. 
so we got a little gap here put a little something there just to follow that red right maybe one hmm. yeah two right <clears throat> let's see I like the way these bursts look here I think I think I can get away with one over here. All right. There's another one. Do we need a third one? I need to stop putting my damn finger in the paint is what I need to do. I don't even know where the hell I put my finger there. I have no idea where that came from. <laughs> Man. It's been a long day, folks. I worked all night <clears throat> trying to get this video done. It's kind of thinking about this thing a lot. Some stuff I just get started and I, it's like I'm hyper-focused to get it done. Which is good for people that are actually paying for a project. Because if I'm in it, I'm in it. I don't want to stop. Though I know it's good for me to quit while I'm ahead sometimes. Which might be the case here. Um, right, these are really nice here. I feel like I could do one somewhere in here. But I don't want to overdo it as if I haven't already done that. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to squeegee off some paint off of this because this is kind of the consistency I want for what I'm about to do. I'm going to use the back of the brush and I'm going to put some dots in random spots. <clears throat> dots are kind of controversial because some people like them, some people don't. I'm going to go ahead and clean off my brush a little. The sooner you can clean off your brush, the better. And I'm going to use the same mineral spirits that I used uh, to reduce. And <clears throat> a buddy of mine, uh, Anthony Monaco Spaz, aka Music City Paint Works, or something like that. Um, he keeps a jar that's already dirty for his initial clean of just old reducer. And I had one, um, but it got it started getting too, too muddy. So I took it to the recycling bin, uh, to the recycling plant, which is where you should take any reducers and such. And I got rid of that. So you see, I'm going to put cover that in paint. I'm just going to put some dots here and there just to give a little bit of kind of a spacey feel. And if your paint's too thick, if your paint's too thick, it'll, it won't leave a dot. It'll kind of leave a funky smudge. 
And sometimes these dots will wrinkle a little bit, which is, you can, you could stop that by putting some hardener in there before you start the dots. Uh, it'll stop the wrinkling. But lately I kind of stopped caring about that. A little wrinkle, no big deal. These dots will probably last longer than the damn paint. Because it's mostly paint, right? And so, I don't know, I like to do them in increments of three sometimes. You could follow the, follow the design if you want. Kind of just another way of adding color. A splash of color here and there. You're fun. You just gotta watch it. <laughs> you gotta watch it with these dots. They get a little addicting. Everything starts to look bedazzled. Not everybody wants the bedazzled look. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to put, I probably, <laughs> probably didn't need to clean this off, but I'm going to, I'm going to sign it. Now this entire thing was done with, I dropped, I, I, uh, out of a bottle, I squeezed out a puddle of paint about that big. And I've been basically spreading it out. It started off here, and I've been spreading it out that way, and then back this way. <clears throat> and that's the amount of paint I used for this entire thing. If you put it in a cup, it'll go a little bit longer because it stays in a puddle. But if you do it this way, you kind of start running dry. So it's, it's always good to do the little cup thing. If you could work out of a cup, that's great. Um, I did not learn that way, unfortunately. <clears throat> it's been hard for me to learn. So... I want to put it somewhere where y'all can see me do my signature. But I don't know if that's going to happen. Nope, it's too awkward. We'll just do right where it was. And you're just going to have to take my word for it, fellas, ladies. Folks. Clean off a nice spot. And again, my, my signature kind of came also out of necessity because uh, I have a hard time with lettering. So the way I do my signature is just a bunch of straight lines, kind of. It's easy for me to do. And I put a swoop underneath there, just in case it's off by one side or the other, the swoop can kind of cover me. Like a tripod. All right, I'm going to stop.
signature looks dumb, but it's okay. I'll fix it. Well, thank you all so very much for watching. Uh, I hope you like the video. I hope you like the way this looks. Um, let me know what you think in the comments section. Uh, all the comments really help to push my videos for the videos to be seen. Um, all the likes really help a lot. So if you can, if you got time, just go around and like all my videos. It helps me out a lot. Um, in the description to every video, I have a bunch of links to Amazon. Um, I think the first one might be discontinued because it was a Kafka brush and I think whoever was selling Kafka brushes on Amazon, maybe they stopped. <clears throat> But it's a bunch of links to Amazon. If you buy anything through them links, it helps me out. It gives me a little bit of kickback. It's what they call a affiliate link. And you can buy a house through there if you want. You could buy all your cars. You can buy a helicopter. Uh, you can buy anything, you know, toilet paper, whatever you want, through them links. Uh, they are links to uh, pinstriping supplies. But anything you buy through them does help me out a little bit. So if you're going to buy anything on Amazon, jump on them links. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it helps me out. And if you do want pinstriping supplies, you know where to get them. All right, y'all. Um, have a very good day, and thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.